importance. Uh, difference between A and PM, for example. So, <laughs> so but luckily we're all here and it's very, I'm honored to be able to lecture or give the lecture to you um, and greetings from gray cold spring of Finland. I, I truly hope that you can light up my day. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Juha, for your uh, very warm in, uh, introduction for us today. So, Mr. Juha, so Mr. Juha and Bu Maria, let me open this session. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the guest lecture series on sustainable development goals today, Thursday, May 12, 2022. I am Tias from ITS Global Engagement, and I will be your master ceremony this afternoon. Thank you for joining our session today. Um, today's topic, very interesting, 16 GLS, name Peace, Justice, and Strong Institution. Before we start our agenda, let me inform you some of rules during the event. First, please adjust your name or ID using format name underscore campus and special for participants from ITS industrial engineering. Please add group number in front of your ID name. Group number is based on the PDF shared in the Zoom chat box soon. And second, during the lecture, please turn on your microphone, turn off your microphone, sorry, during the session and only turn it on when the moderator gives the chance. And third, please fill your attendance at the link given in the Zoom chat box. Our committee also sent the attendance link in the room, Zoom chat box, sorry, for participants who wish to get an e-certificate and stamp. Please fill the attendance form 15 minutes maximum after the session starts. And for participants who wish to ask questions during, during Q&A session, Please send your questions to the link that also given by the committee in the chat box. And yeah, you or or you can also ask directly by clicking the rest the raise hand feature. Okay, so today's GLS on SDGs will present a topic entitled Ethics for Real that will be delivered by Mr. Juha Panenen of and also this lecture will be moderated by Associate Professor Maria Anijasari, PhD, from ITS Global Engagement. And before we start our agenda, allow me to introduce our moderator today. Okay, so Associate Professor Maria Anijasari is a Associate Professor at the Department of Industrial Engineering, ITS Surabaya. And she's also a director of ITS Global Engagement and also consultant for, for Surabaya City Government. And she also acquires awards such as Indonesian Representative in International Visitor Leadership Program or IVLP. And then she also acquires Indonesian Representative in International Learning Experience or ILE. And also, her educational background is she was graduate from School of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering, UNSSW. And I would like to say hi to our moderator today. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, Bu Maria. Good afternoon, Tias. Thank you so much for introduction. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Bu Maria, uh, I would like to give you the time and place to start our session today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, Tias, could you please kindly show the CV, the very uh, brief uh, CV of our speaker today? Absolutely. Okay, so thank you. Today we have uh, 189 people in this Zoom, uh, Mr. Juha, and very big numbers because I well, we promoted your program and seems like everyone wants to learn from you. And we are very lucky having you to, uh, today. So Mr. Juha is uh, the acad uh, academic faculty member in YAM, you can see professional teacher qualification YAM, and uh, he holds Master of Engineering Technology Competence Management. 
and uh, he also has a very long uh, track record in the professional experiences like you said uh, you can see product manager and also customer support manager and vice president which is very very rich experience if today we want to learn about the topic i believe we can learn from the expert and also thank you so much mr juan not only not only delivering a lecture but also a set of case study and interaction with students which is very very useful so we are now at uh, 43 minutes past three so i don't want to take more time i will keep the time fully for uh, mr juhan to deliver the lecture for 60 minutes and then we will go for uh, breakout room discussion and also presentation the time is yours please Thank you very much for your kind words and uh, introduction. All right, uh, let me share my screen and I will be going through the materials that you have already received. Hopefully you have been able to review them and uh, get a guide, kind of an idea that what are the things that we are discussing today. And then additionally, I will be uh, providing a, a kind of a presentation which I'm drawing a little bit about uh, things when we go into the actual things, the, 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 the real content, so to say, values, ethics. Um, this material and, and presentation is, is part of uh, uh, YAMC sustainability and responsibility course so uh, you're able to share what we are going through and what we are teaching here also to finish and other international students so this is very international case um you know we are when we are thinking about the, the responsibilities that corporations and companies have they are divided into these three main areas finance is obvious companies need to make money if they don't make money they don't exist but companies do have responsibilities for environment and society as well and now we are mainly, fo mainly focusing on these environmental and soci societal topics. Uh, finance is something, as I said, it comes, it comes granted. But what about these other things? I'm claiming here that we are currently living in a situation where almost everything is better than before. Generally, the standard of living in the world has improved. Education is improving all around the world. Um, this safety thing that I have there, someone may uh, question if if that's true or not because uh, you know we are having quite of a dramatic situation in europe the war between ukraine and russia but in general if we think about again the whole 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 globe safety is improving society uh, social safety networks have improved and so on and so forth um, but as I say here, we are still having challenges. Uh, one of the challenges that is truly impacting to all of us is of course the climate change. We can't ex escape from that. There's pollution, plastics, having a major uh, impact on our uh, oceans and, and waters and, and environment in general. Deforestation is causing havoc. Many species are 
dying in extinction, uh, then our population is aging more and more. How do we take care of uh, elderly people? How do we cope that case? Uh, Big Brother and social media, they, they can be a benefit, but they are also, I might say, to some extent, they are fuel for this polarization. And of course, we have had this COVID-19 hitting all, us all. Polarization is something that I want to share a couple of words because it has an impact on, on the ways we are conducting our businesses in, in reality. Um, there are different kinds of polarization in the world. Um, political one is clear and obvious. The things that are happening in the United States, uh, for example, the, the Republicans and Democrats, they are really struggling with uh, holding their democracy and democratic system alive. They are so far from each other. And that has a ripple effect, uh, which we have seen, for example, uh, Though, though it might sound crazy, but it's so visible that what is happening in North America, it is also reflecting the situation what is happening, for example, in Finland. Our political language and scheme, scene has polarized much more than it was uh, only five to ten years ago. And, and of course, when we continue and think about this polarization, there's also this, this polarization of incomes, meaning that we have, or, or these mega rich people, uh, which are completely new breed, has uh, emerged over the last 20 years. Uh, people that are so obscenely wealth that they can do whatever they want. And also this, this uh, polarization with, with the high earning people and the, the kind of a normal people, it's just the, the difference with the incomes is growing bigger and bigger and bigger. So <clears throat> we have to tackle somehow on these, these questions, and it comes from us, from within. We have to walk the talk. We have to be able to uh, define, firstly, a proper values and ethics in our businesses, in our life. And then when we follow them, we may be better off in the future. <laughs> One thing regarding these super rich people, I find it quite amusing. The, the, the richest men in the world, they all seem to be eager to get out of here. They are, all are playing with rockets and trying to get to Mars or somewhere else. So maybe that's a good start if they go and fly away and leave us for the better for the future. Okay, <laughs> that was just a joke. So, how do we tackle these things? Okay, let's go that into that direction a little bit later. But next, I will be um, showing you a little thing about what I mean with uh, social responsibility. Uh, just give me a moment. I'll be adjusting my presentation on the screen properly. And uh, we can continue. So social responsibility, what does it mean? Um,
we need to have that um, positive vibe and positive impact on the surrounding means that when we are thinking about the company as a kind of a corporate, it is a corporate citizen. It is an entity that is located physically quite often into a certain place. Um, the duties of the company has also related to the community. Um, and kind of an overall idea about being a, a, a social responsibility and a socially responsible citizen is that first of all, we are trying to reduce as much as possible the usage of energy and raw materials because they are not, the, the sources are not unlimited. We are living in a finite, finite uh, world where we have certain capacities available, but we are not supposed, we cannot just consume and consume and consume. So definitely we do, do need to pay special attention to recyclability and ethics there in the designs of the products. We'll be getting that a little bit later on also. Then of course, paying taxes and fair salaries is part of the deal. Of course, we all know that quite a few companies are trying to their best to bend the rules and finding uh, find the ways of avoiding taxation because that's, you know, the company is seeing that that money is out of their pockets. It's not benefiting the owners, the, the, the ones that have invested in. But at the same time, they completely forget that though it's the, the money is out of their pockets, but if the taxation and, and the tax, tax uh, earnings are then providing better education, for example, better health care, um, and there's a clear correlation that when you're paying taxes, you are receiving certain, I would say, a return on investment. So sometimes these taxes should be seen a bit differently. Um, I'm not talking about corruption and those, those tax avoidance things, but I, I just want to point out that it's a funny, funny phenomenon that we have here in Finland. Our overall taxation level is rather high. But despite of the fact that we are paying a lot of taxes, we Finns pay, pay them rather gladly or dutifully at least. And that's because it's easy for us to see the clear correlation that, okay, my tax money is providing schooling, which is for free, uh, all the way to universities in Finland. You don't have to pay a dime for a master's level and, and, and those post, even postgraduate studies. It's free of charge. We have basically free healthcare. Our, my parents, uh, they are getting good pensions. They have been taken care of. So I'm seeing the correlation between the taxation and, and, and the, the kind of a return on investment. And that's, that's a kind of a good thing, I have to say. I won't be going to too much into details on these videos. You can watch them also after the lessons. But let's talk about a little bit about what these sustainable and responsible companies should do in general. 
and and, and the first item here is that they are to do more than just obey the law. You have to take into account all the stakeholders' needs and expectations also, and maximize the, maximize the positive impact from business. Not only for the stakeholders, but the whole community as well. Well, the community in, in one sense can be considered as one of the stakeholders in the system. And, and minimize the negative impacts on environments. And they should be transparent in their actions to show what is happening. Uh, and what it means then, what I'm hey, talking about this, this, this soft law. Um, these these underlined words here are actually hyperlinks to to Wikipedia uh, definition pages. So if you want to read even further, you just click them and 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 continue reading there. But um, soft law is something that um, we we share in a sense that that. Uh, is that the, the way of conducting businesses in a certain manner that is perceived sustainable and that is perceived responsible. That's the uh, soft law as a kind of a basic definition. Hard law means that you have to obey it. If you don't, you find yourself in a court or in a jail. And when we think about, I've been talking about the stakeholders quite a lot. Um, this is one, one view of what are the stakeholders of any company. You have your employees, you have to take care of them. I mean, uh, already mentioned, pay salaries in time, be fair, be fair with the salary pay payment. Then you have your supplier network. Uh, no companies or, uh, nowadays are so self-sustained uh, or self-sufficient uh, that they are, you know, making everything from scratch and, and, and are so-called ver vertically integrated. 80%, that's the kind of a number that I have uh, in my back, back of my head, 80% of all businesses are extremely networked nowadays, which means that you, the, any company, any given company has a rather wide network supplier network in their operations. And then of course that network covers the customers as well. On the other hand, we have banks and investors that are having their money invested in the company. They have their own interest. Authorities, they are interested about the companies. Are the companies uh, abiding law? Are the, the business manners and the products according to, to standards and, and, and are they safe and so on and so forth? Media is very, very much interested on what companies are, are doing. And I might say that when we think about uh, sustainable and responsible operations and, and um, approach in the business. Media is quite often the watchdog there. Because when a, 
company makes a major mistake and blunder and, and, and do, does these uh, especially environmentally harmful uh, errors, for example, uh, spillages and, and other pollution leaks, media is the one quite often report, reporting about the, the incident the first. So in that sense, media is an important factor when we are thinking about sustainability. And then of course, at the end of the day, we do have these insurance companies who, who are ins insuring the, the uh, equipment, machinery, and, and so on and so forth. So, yes. Sustainability responsibility covers quite a, quite a big of an area. Uh, right, and now, let me check where we are in the timing. I will be going through the next presentation, also available to you later on, or in the in the link, links. I'm I'm claiming here that we need to widen the social responsibility, and what I mean by that. In the previous presentation, I already um, uh, gave a kind of a glimpse that what it means to be a responsible and socially responsible company. You have to take care of your employees. But as said, the responsibility and social responsibility and environmental responsibility, they are reaching further from your own yard. Companies should evaluate and develop also the whole supply chain, not only their own, you know, within their own walls, but also with whom you are dealing with. You can't escape from that responsibility by, by saying that it's not our fault, it was our supplier. Well, how on earth you're having then that kind of a supplier which is not sustainable or responsible? It is your fault then. You have uh, decided to use that kind of a supplier. Right. So your responsibility covers more than just your own yard. There are certain basic um, factors that have to be taken into consideration. Child labor or, or forced labor or such things, freedom of the association and union. Those are fundamental rights that companies do have to abide. And when we go a little bit further, you know, there are things when it comes to labor, when we are thinking about the ones that are working in the companies. Child labor is a fact. Uh, 160 million children They're involved in child labor. Okay, in some cases, when we are thinking about teenagers and so on and so forth, um, it's it's not always redeem or deemable thing. But when we are thinking about little children and and that uh, companies are really running their operations and and counting on their labor on on children, then it's not you know no 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 don't go there. And the similar thing, forced labor. Problems with human rights violations. And that is also a pretty darn big number, 21 million are victim, victims of forced labor huge amount of people. 
So these things have to be taken into consideration when you are thinking about your own supply chain, the network of the, comp of the companies that you're working with. Make sure that this kind of a violation doesn't happen. In general, what is the reputation of your supplier? Take that into consideration. Are there discrimination problems? Are there gender, age, sexual orientation, maybe religion can be one. When you take a look on these topics, I am throwing at you quite a few questions. You know, I'm not giving you the answers, but I'm throwing you the questions. For example, is freedom of association and collective bar bargaining? Ask these questions when you are evaluating your suppliers. What about the wage and social security in, in the country? Now, this is a little bit interesting uh, uh, view. <laughs> you see that there is no, uh, no uh, there's, Finland is not among these countries. And that's, that's a kind of a funny thing because these countries that are listed here, they have the minimum wage stated in the law. It's in the law on the country. In Finland, it's not. In, in Finnish le legislation, there is no a clear definite amount of uh, euros or dollars. Well, euros, we are using euros. That has to be paid because, as I showed you earlier, um, we have the collective bargaining system. And it means that all of the employees in Finland are part of that collective bargaining uh, structure. And that those unions and those agreements are securing the minimum wages. And it's, of course, the minimum wage is then uh, different on the different uh, branches on different areas of business, of business. So um, sometimes um, sometimes you do not need everything to put in the law. Okay. Um, then, of course, working hours and overtime are they? You know, is that reasonable? What your your supplier is dealing with with their employees, and of course, these questions need to be asked also on your own with with your own um, company. Remember to ask the right questions and don't be afraid to ask them. And then <clears throat> one thing that relates heavily to um, sustainability is actually how you create your products and services. Um, you know, I'm an engineer in my background and, and I'm teaching the logistics engineers, but also mechanical engineers. And, and that's something that is very close to my heart because the sustainability and, and responsibility when it comes to products and services it starts from the drawing table, from the very beginning.
There are things that are really affecting, you know, this, this, okay, take a look on this, this reducing, or this, this uh, video of Earth overshoot day. Last year, it was uh, July, end of July, meant meaning that uh, we had spent the kind of an annual, annual uh, global ca capacity of raw materials and energy when, it, when we are considering them to be in, in a sustainable manner already in, in end of July. Take a look on this video, it's a good one, short but it tells you the pretty much of this, the problems that we face. Now, when we're talking about uh, uh, sustainability and, and sustainable design, um, we have to keep in mind that we are always producing some waste. We're wasting energy. We are wasting raw materials and, and, and stuff. Um, honestly, I might say that in, in some cases, it might be uh, good if companies were able to create business out of these side uh, streams. So some companies have been able to create business by utilizing these waste streams. And that's a clever thing. But in more often than not, this is a typical life cycle of any product that we are talking. We start from raw materials, exploration, mining, processing, and we end up having these, these raw materials, steel, copper, gold, silver and so on and so forth and then the design process starts and it is in a key situation and key phase of the process because after it's been designed the only thing what you can do is to produce it according to the design so to say so it was a designer who made those decisions and it, of course, it was his boss or her boss who gave the guidelines that, okay, this way you will have to design the products. You have certain limitations. Then your product goes into actual use or reuse. Unfortunately, there are quite a bit of products that drop and go completely to waste nowadays, yet and still. I'm having my fancy mobile phone here, smartphone. Honestly, this is a rather stupid thing. It has quite a bit of valuable materials in it. And this is when I drop it on the ground and the glass, uh, the, the screen fa fails, cracks, it becomes a trash. And more often that that thing ends up to a landfill. Where, where the other house, common household uh, trash is taken. And that's not good. So we should pay attention to how to make the product as recyclable as possible. Could we have uh, uh, this reuse, or I'm using a word, retrofit? Meaning that with a simple upgrade, 
you are able to prolong and improve the, the uh, properties of the product and thus extend the lifetime. You know, I was in a service business in, uh, and especially in North America, we were um, uh, repairing and, and upgrading and retrofitting those wind turbine gearboxes. You know, those, that gearbox is sitting there at the top of the, the nacelle. Nasty place to so service, by the way. It's, it's 100 meters up from the ground. And, and you have to take care that those gearboxes that are transferring the, the, the rotation from the, the rotor to the generator, they are not supposed to break because it's the, the gearbox there is just to change the rotation speed. It doesn't do anything other value added. So they have to be able to operate and, and, and function. So for example, in that business, when we think about that kind of a gearbox, they are typically those gears and bearings that wear out because of maybe due to overload or just simply because they have run ran so long. So they, they just age. It's normal wear and tear. What we did quite successfully was that we were re retrofitting and utilizing because the housing, the box where everything is in, that doesn't wear out. We could utilize those boxes, just maybe change all of the bearings, make sure that everything is up and running. And even if the, the gears were fine, you might even just, you didn't need to manufacture necessarily completely a new one. You just ground the surface so that it is like a brand new again, and it continues, and then it lasts again another 10 years, 15 years in operation. That is that retrofitting and, and, and reusing the main goal there. Of course, it's not applicable on, on all of the uh, products or, or um, uh, components, but if you can if you would be able to, you know, make this, this smartphone a modular where you could basically kind of a replace a new motherboard because the screen is, you know, is something that you don't need to change. So we have to be able to think of new ways of, of making and building our, our products so that they would be more sustainable because that's that's the only way we can actually fight the climate change as well because all of this is generating quite a lot of uh, uh, pressures to our environment uh, this is a little bit old uh, video but the, don't disregard the age listen what uh, the person on the video is saying again take on a look on take a look on that on on your own time um when we are thinking about uh products i have been talking about those mobile phones quite often now but these this obsolescence our our components our, our computers phones cars clothes they tend to become obsolete over the time when you think about this this are we are how we have designed and and how what we want to produce of course if you are producing a product that is superior from the very beginning it is perfect 
The problem is that you cannot sell it more than once to one customer. Because if the product is just perfect, there is no need to replace or change it because it, it, it does its it job brilliantly. Unfortunately, marketing is searching always new ways of selling us more stuff. And one way of making uh, the need, creating the need is that those, those products that they have already sold us, they broke, they become obsolete. And sometimes this built-in obsolescence is, is just, uh, it drives me nuts, to be honest with you. There are things that have been designed so that it is impossible to replace or repair so that the design is is not made for the for the repairs or it for example there there was this this one uh, um, car manufacturer ford happened to be and um, it's one of the mid mid size uh, uh, cars here in Europe, Ford Mondeo. Mondeo. Uh, they stopped providing service and maintenance to one of the engines that was prone to fail. So there, there were thousands and hundreds of thousands of pretty good shaped uh, cars, used cars that had an engine failure, but there was no service and repairs and spare parts any longer available for that engine. So what do you do? You have to scrap the whole freaking car. There was no service, there was no components, spare parts available. Well, style obsolescence. Cars, again, that's a good example. You know, car manufacturers are introducing new models every four, every six years. And in the meantime, they have this, this uh, facelift, midlife uh, facelift. So that styling makes your old car obsolete because it's not so good looking as the new one. Systemic obsolescence. I have a good sample. Okay, it's not over here. Uh, I have an older Samsung tablet. It's something like um, seven, seven years old or so. It has an old Android operating system in it. But because that Android operating system is so old, I cannot, for example, uh, uh, watch YouTube with a tablet. And you know, YouTube and these, these videos, that would be a perfect for that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that tablet, but it doesn't work because the operating system is so old and there is no upgrades available for it. So it's just, a, it is a waste. I can't use it. There's no value in it anymore. So that is a systemic system has upgraded so much that the older versions become obsolete. And the worst kind of obsolescence is this, this programmed obsolescence. Uh, printer 
manufacturer Epson is notoriously well known that their inkjet printers have this one chip on the motherboard, which is calculating and counting how many papers you have printed. And then there is a certain number when it's, when it's been reached, the printer goes dead. There's nothing wrong in the printer. There's nothing wrong with the mechanics. You could do it and you could use it fine, but that's, that little chip there on the motherboard is calculating at how many, counting how many papers you have printed and then after an X amount of papers, it dies. I mentioned the YouTube. Well, funnily, if you search YouTube, you can find uh, uh, DIY do-it-yourself repairs for Epson printers where this specific chip is, go is removed from the mother motherboard. And after removing that chip, <laughs> the printer starts to work fine again. And that is almost, in my mind, like a criminal, criminal activity. You plan and program a thing to fail. Jeez. Ooh. All right. Now, I won't go there any further, but I just want to um, say few words about this this CSR reporting which is one of the you know these these case cases and you're supposed to evaluate these companies um, sometimes this CSR corporate social responsibility report or like it's in here in case of Walmart it is environmental social and governance uh, the similar report. That is a good initiative. And, and again, take a look on this, this GRI. There are a couple of videos regarding the initiative. Gives you a good idea that what are the things that you are supposed to search in those uh, uh, social reports. But basically, what we are talking it's uh, it's a kind of a key and a way of, of encouraging companies towards responsibility. Um, unfortunately, it's not globally mandatory. The, the responsibility reporting, there is no not yet global mandatory requirements like we have for example when you are in a, in a stock market company you have a certain financial reporting requirements and you have to fulfill it it's written in the law there are some changes or though and and it will become mandatory within Euro european union and it's becoming more and more strict Um, so this, this social reporting, uh, corporate responsibility reporting has been mandatory from 2017. Um, but the problem there is that Companies have been able, it's been given an, a, a, an option for companies to decide what to report and what not. It says here, you might say it's all about public relations. Bullshit. If you are able to report what you want to report, I wouldn't put anything, uh, you know, 
discriminating things on that document. There's no consequences, <laughs> though even you put any kind of lies in it. You don't get any fines. You can put whatever you want in it. And this is what I want you to pay attention to. Take a look what the company is saying and keep in your mind, in the back of your head, don't believe a single word. Be skeptical. Be very, very skeptical and analytical. Is it truly so what they are saying here that they are doing? So things that you have to take into consideration when you're reading it, is it balanced? How comparable, uh, comparable it is? Is it clear? Is it readable? So take those into consideration. And, and finally, I want to, before we, we let you go into these breakout rooms, I want to share a couple of words regarding the values and how they fit into, um, I would say, in, into management or with or within management tools. There are, I'm seeing certain statements and, and uh, things that are, are part of the tool package for, for top management of the companies. And let's do it. Um, I will be drawing a little bit on here. Let's put some, as engineers, we like these basic graphs. And graphs need to have uh, this uh, y axis and, and, and they need to have x axis as well. Now, this x axis here is time. We have a uh, now, it's around here. Now it's the time. And what do we have here? Not young, but we are having future. Future is there. Uh, on this uh, vertical axis, I might say we have ambitions or wishes. Ambitions. And what do we have then in the graph? Um, these management tools, one of them is a statement. Let's, let's put it here. This one is mission. Mission statement answers to the questions that why is this company existing? What is the reason it to be? What is it doing? What they are doing at the moment and how they want to do it. Then of course, we do not, uh, that would be very, if you don't have anything else, but the mission that I exist to do something, my mission is to teach you things as well as I can. That my, that's my mission statement. I want to be best Yuhapanan in, in Yank. Well, actually I am, <laughs> but there's nothing there more than that because we all need to have another thing and that's our vision. What do we want to be in the future? What is our dream? What is our goal? And that has to be clear. Well, my goal is to be within probably next 20 years or so, a well-earning pensioner reclining on a sunny beach, maybe there somewhere in the Indonesia, <laughs> having my tie or something like that and driving a convertible. That's my vision. But the company should have their visions as well. 
where do they want to go? And you actually could do it on to yourself as well. Where do you want to go? What do you want to be after you graduate? Write it down. It helps to focus on, on the future. And then what do we have next? We need a path to what color I should use, green one. This one here, how to reach the vision and that's strategy. Of course, the strategy is not, you know, just straight line that, okay, this is the way we are gonna do it. It is a road. There are steps there that are leading gradually to your vision, to the goal. And how do and where those values are located in this drawing? Let's use orange. Values. Ethics. They go hand in hand. Well, if you think about, uh, you need to go somewhere. The strategy is the roadmap. You may have different paths. You can go like that, or you can go like that. Or then you can have this, this straight line approach. These different ways are how you want to reach your goal. Your values are defining. This one is according to your, let's put it like this. according to values. And then it means that if you walk to talk, if you abide and follow your values, you should be brave enough to say that, okay, this path cannot be taken because it's not necessarily maybe sustainable or it's fighting against the values, the basics that you have decided within your company. You have to follow them. And I want you now, because it's about the time to go to the breakout rooms, keep this in mind. Evaluate those companies, as you have seen. And while doing it, I have another link, which I will be sharing you uh, with uh, chat. Just give me a second. Uh, I've got so many windows <laughs> open. But I need to find the one. Just give me a second. There. That links document there. So, again, this one is a Microsoft Excel online spreadsheet. I'm going to open it so you can see what it is. I'm challenging you to fulfill this document. You see that we have here the companies. So I'm limiting. Uh, companies may have more than four values. Try to explain or, or write down the main values of each of the companies just in a couple of words. And then I have here the other uh, area of the table. It says here, UNGC, United, United Nations Global Compact. You know, that was one of the, the links uh, also in the, in the pre-materials. Um, 
let's take a look on on that one i'm going to copy that as well when we are thinking about united nations global compact i'll copy this link also directly to our chat so go there check out if your company is here I'm not sure if all of the companies that have been listed in are participants of the UN Global Compact. And then here we have these 17 different boxes. And I'm just going to show you. Okay, if your company is part of the United Nations Global Compact, put yes. That company was found in the Global Compact. Good. Then go and see, for example, when we take a look on that, let's take one of those. I don't know oh, which one is pharmaceuticals and biotechnology. So let's take a look at that. Pharma does. What are these companies? What is the company saying that what are the, the 17 sustainability goals that United Nations Global Compact has? That what are the ones that this company is adhering? And it seems to me that this, this specific company is focusing on number one, four, eight, 10, 13, maybe 16, 17. So they are not focusing on, on number seven. What, we, what is that? That is the, um, let's take a look. Number seven sustainable energy for all so that's not the, the cup, of, uh, cup of tea for that company so take a look what they, the company itself is saying that what are the, the goals that they are following and then put it here that okay if that company is now interested or or uh on on sustainable goal, goal number two just mark like an with an x capital x that's a good one and then let's put another if, if they would be following this United Nations sustainable goals. Because what I want to see is that what kind of a overall picture we get out of these companies. So it, it's going to be rather interesting. Okay. And then your breakout session. Okay. Uh, Mr. Juha, I would like to first of all just give you a very uh, great appreciation because the topic you share with us is really valuable. We have a couple of questions already in our link and some of them sent by lecturer directly to me, so I put it in the Slido. But yes, when we talk about business ethics, it is completely not easy thing. We have a lot of case study and we would like to discuss with you later after the breakout room. But now, student, please, if you have question, you can uh, directly ask question later in the question and answer session. Or you can write your question in the link provided by the committee. And now I believe this is time for us to have a breakout room. And the breakout room will be about 30 minutes. 30 minutes in each breakout room. You need to discuss the question that already explained by Mr. Chua. Uh, Mr. Chua, I'm very sorry. I should call you Pana, Pana Anan, yeah? Not Mr. Oh, no. Chua, yeah, actually? I'm fine. I'm fine. It's okay, yeah? It's okay. So thank you very much. <laughs> because Chua is uh, easier to be pronounced. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay, so, Okay, everyone, so now this is the time for you to join the breakout room. Yes, and the committee, Alpito and uh, others will send you to the breakout room. We have 30 groups because the number of students is quite big. So for students who already assigned in group one up to 19, please go straight to group one up to 19. However, students who haven't assigned to the group yet, you can, you can choose group 20 up to group 30, okay? Even 31 in here, I can see on the screen. So you can go to group according to the uh, 
allocation that have been done. The, the time only 30 minutes, guys. So you have to be very uh, quick, discuss with your colleague, go to the link provided by the committee and uh, put your uh, point of discussion in the link provided as well. So we can record the comment and thought. Yes, do you have any uh, additional information to be given? Yes, thank you, uh, Bu Maria. Uh, for I already informed you earlier that uh, we will divide you regarding the PDF in the group. So for those of you who haven't have any group, we will assign you randomly from number 20 until number 30. Uh, we are very sorry, we are skipping number 26, so it's actually 30 room. All right, so we will assign you immediately and thank you very much. Yes, and I will be adding adding uh, some empty rows in that table so that all of the comp all the groups can have the companies in that value table. So, okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, yes, and also the committee, we may send the student who haven't uh, moved to the group randomly if they don't have number in front of their name. Yes, absolutely, Bu Maria. Thank you very much. Could you please help me, Tias and Alfito, to send the, a student to the group and ask them because they may think which group they belong to. So just send to each group about five students and then uh, Alfito and the committee can uh, move from group to group and encourage a uh, discussion among the group. Yes, certainly, Bu Maria. We will still working on it. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. 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 I have to, I'm going to do some adjustments on them, on that uh, document now. So review and protect them. Come on, come on, assistant. The assistant of the course, Rahma, Tebi, Nima, Rama, and others. Could you please go to each group and also uh, princess and other assistant? Could you please join as a group and then uh, involve in the discussion as well? Mr. Juha, I just would like to introduce Dr. Nani Kurniati, one of the lecturers in uh, our department, Industrial and System Engineering. Hello, Ibu Nani. Hello, Ibu Nani. Yeah, hello. Uh, good afternoon, um, Dr. Juha. I'm so sorry yeah. I cannot open my camera. So I have oh, a problem. Okay. So, you have problem with your uh, city, Maria. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Nani Kurniati is the uh, vice head of the department. And as discussed previously with Miko, we also looking forward to collaborate, uh, collaborating more with your university and listening to your presentation just now. I already have a lot of things in my head because we have serious problem about this, this ethic. Many industries in uh, businesses in uh, Indonesia, they always said that business ethic is expensive. So if they uh, implement business ethic, they will not be able to be competitive, for example, Compa competing with Chinese manufacturer, for example. So 
somehow it is not easy for a company in developing countries like us. This is also one uh, concern that we have about the quality and then the design and the thing that we discussed through email and just now you explained to us. It is also telematics for uh, companies in developing countries. Uh, Dr. Nani expertise is on uh, in quality, quality and reliability engineering. And yes, maybe later we can discuss about what can we do after this uh, lecture. Are you joining, are you engaging with a project on a business ethic across country, Joel? No, no, I'm not. I'm not in that one. But yeah, that's that sounds pretty good. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, I find these these uh, topics that I, I I talk to you today, as you probably saw, that I'm uh, they come from my heart. You know, yes, I, I want a company to, to run the businesses in a sustainable manner. That's mm -hmm. the the lifeline for us uh, as a human kind, so yes. so to say. So it's very very important and vital to to get that understanding. Uh, spread around you know like the students like you are having it's very important yes. so yes agree with you it is so important and honestly if we look at the current situation and current generation many people just think about profit as the main value they just want to get profit and profit and profit i got yes. a couple what you call from NGO, comment from NGO, but like for example, big company who sell their product, uh, we import the product abundantly and they don't have any policy on recycling, for example. So Indonesia become a dumping yard for mm. items from developed countries, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Juha, could you also Introduce Timo to us. I can see on the screen. No, no, he 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 couldn't join us at the end of the day. He, I think he was I supposed. I can see his, his name on the screen right now. Hello, Mr. Kimo. Ah, oh, there you are. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so yes, much for joining us. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be dropping off for a while. But I'll be back in, a, say, five, ten minutes. I need to have a smoke. Okay, sure, sure, throw, please. Powder my nose. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I'll be back soon. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kimo, we have plenty of sunshine here. I know that you are still in the very cold situation there. Is it right? Uh, excuse me, I need to move a little bit quieter place in the... Our no office, problem. But, yeah, and what do you ask? What is the temperature now in Finland? Uh, something like 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Oh. It's quite warm. Yeah. Oh, At the morning, good, eh? so, yeah, it's very nice. Because last time today. I talked with Miko, he said yes. that there's like one meter thick of snow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, in you, in Yubaskala is middle, middle in Finland and there is no snow anymore. It's maybe in the forest there is a little bit. But, I see, but, I see. Uh, the summer uh, is coming. Uh, yes, yes. It's great <laughs> summer is coming. Kimo, I yes. just wonder what is the what are courses that you are teaching in YAM? Uh, I'm starting YAM uh, uh, 1st of May this year. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm is teaching uh, transportation modes and intelligent transportation courses uh, in YAMC. Transportation and, uh, and intelligent transportation. Today come back to the main room. Uh, I really hope that you have great discussion in the group. And now this is the time for us to listen to your finding and your discussion. We have around 20 minutes. So now we are at the uh, 20 minutes past 
five. We have 20 minutes up to 17.41. And we will give opportunity to maybe five groups to uh, reflect and share the discussion in your room and point out what is the finding, what is interesting about your discussion and so on. I may invite any group to start with. Anyone want to start? Please raise your hand, everyone. I know that uh, you have a lot of ideas in your mind, actually. Don't be hesitate. Anyone want to start? Can I start from Fahri? Fahri group? Fahri group two. Yes. Hello. Hello, Fahri. How are you? I'm actually, um, actually, uh, experiencing some illness, but um, it's oh. nothing necessary for yeah for for me to be worried about actually. Okay, okay, Fahri. So you have two minutes, two to three minutes to share your result. Please introduce your group member and also introduce yourself to uh, Mr. Yuha, and you can start sharing your finding. Fahri, time is yours. I thank you for the opportunity. So um, I will let myself to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Fakri Salarendro. And I would like to introduce my group member as well. Um, there are um, Putro Kamila, and then, and then um, there are Suci Anastasia, Dwike Ramadani, and the last one is M. Arden Ashari, or Muhammad Arden Ashari. And for our findings, it's actually, it's quite, um, it's quite interesting, especially if I may sh um, share my screen. Um, our company, the, uh, the company that is assigned to us is actually at and and there are four values that um, that has been being held by um, at and which are the life, uh, life, um, life two, and then um, sorry for the typo. And the next one is think big, as um, as this one is our group most favorite value. And the and the other the next one is pursue excellence, and the, the last one is stand for equality. And for our findings, um, at and is. Um, categorized in the UN Global Global Compact, and for the Sustainable Goals, actually, if I may um, make a sum make a summary of it, is actually they are focusing especially on the workforce and also um, the energy the energy side or energy matters uh, that related to the SDGs, other than um, poverty, other than hunger. But for the other for the other side, such as the renewable energy, as they are one of the biggest telecommunication company. They are also focusing on that. But yeah, so if I only, um, that's, that's only the thing that I can share. Um, and this, this is actually quite interesting for us as we don't really expect that our company will be this much um, to be, uh, to be, has the same, has the same, um, or has the same idea or has the same goal with the SDGs one. So that's all from us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fahri, could you please uh, mention one thing, one interesting thing during your discussion? Is it easy to find the point that you just mentioned or the group agree on that? Or there is a struggle in finding and identifying what you just mentioned. Thank you. So uh, one, of the, one of the things that actually harder to us is actually when they, when the at and when we found we found out that on the at and website, um, it is clear it is clearly mentioned that um, what of the SDG point SDGs point that um, that the company is actually supporting, but also but there are a lack of information or a lack of integration of information that um, results in the um, in the in the company report in the ESG company report that saying. There are some points. Uh, there are some points that is not included on the on the previous website that we the, uh, on the previous site that we found out before. And there are some points such as for the point uh, for the uh, for the SDGs point ten, which uh, which is the reduce inequality on the on the side on the side that we found before the before the report. We found out that they don't really they don't really support the reduce inequalities, but after we are reading properly about the report, we found out that at and is currently um, really, really supporting the, the really, really supporting the inequality on their 
uh, company. Okay, I'm not in the position of commenting on your work, but later uh, you, uh, Mr. Yuha will comment on your finding, but we, we just keep keep the note first. Thank you so much, Fadi, and all the members of group two. And now I will give opportunity for other group. Anyone want to raise your hand and then nominate yourself, please? Come on, guys, this is a very good opportunity for you actually to learn. Okay, Esra. Extra from group 10. Esra, please introduce your group, Esra. And then uh, after that, could you please uh, explain your finding? Okay. Uh, first of all, is my, am I audible? Yes, yes, very clear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Maria, for the opportunity, as well as Mr. Juha for the lecture. Let me introduce myself first and my group. My name is Ezra Tautafianto from group 10. You can call me Ezra. And uh, my group member, fellow teammates, there are Alian Sharisky, Shafa Fauzia Fatim, Irfan Prasetya, and Atala Hafiz. So uh, let's begin with our findings regarding the core values and, of course, the UNGC part. Let me, if I may, let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, we did found the uh, core values from our companies, which uh, our company, which is Electrolux, there are actually three core values that is uh, the company strives to implement in their company, which are uh, passion for innovation, customer obsession, and drive for results. And from the website that uh, Mr. Juha have, uh, the Mr. Juha shared previously with us regarding the UNGC, yes, we can find Electrolux in the participant of UNGC, UNGC, and there are six SDGs values that the companies uh, have implemented, which are as these five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they are, they are, sorry, uh, I guess I'm mistaken. Oh, wait, five, six, seven, eight, and 12 and 13, which are gender equality, clean water and sanitation, uh, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, responsible consumption and production, as well as the climate action. So um, in our breakout room, we strive to question these uh, findings, which are related to the SDGs values. It, what we question is really, is, is the company really implement the values of, of these uh, SDGs? So we strive to find um, uh, the incidents that may Electrolux have done in the past that may uh, negatively impact environmentally or socially, but uh, we did turn out uh, find interesting innovations from Electrolux that uh, actually move towards sustainability. And um, and we from uh, at least from our findings, maybe we need more more time to research also. But uh, from the innovations, I think they they always they have really implemented the SDGs values that I've mentioned before, which are uh, six SDGs values. So yeah, I guess uh, that's our findings from group 10. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And if there may be any question, let us know. Thank you. Mahir. Thank you. Thank you, Ezra, for your presentation. Again, like mentioned by Mr. Yuha in his presentation, we have to be skeptics. I, uh, yes, so when, when we see the report, because uh, I know that this is uh, the, the time is so limited, but later on we have to check with the real practice, give more comment and so on. But what you uh, you mentioned is so good, Electrolux. Okay, it is something that ring in my ring my the bell in my mind because when I was doing my uh, master and PhD, I engaged closely with them, and they are actually very concerned about uh, really recycle, reusability, and so on. Let's move on. I know that a lot of things need to be discussed, but the time is so limited. I invite others, other group to nominate uh, yourself. Please, guys, you can raise your hand. Tiko. Yes, Tiko from group 12. Tiko, please introduce yourself and your group, and then your finding. All right, thank you, uh, Maria, for the opportunity and also Mr. Yuha for the presentation. So, uh, presenters, my name is Lam Fidiko and I'm with four of us from Group 12, uh, Refan, Sentry, and also Galhi and Yoga. We have findings about the company that we have choose. Uh, it's, it's about the General Electric. Maybe I can share my screen. 
Okay, is it already feasible? Yes, it is feasible. Okay, thank you for the confirmation. So, uh, uh, as we know, General Electric is the company that uh, American Multinational Conglomerate Incorporated in New York, and they have the mission statement to use in the next industrial era and to build, move power and cure the world. So I think it's, in, it's interesting, quite a good statement, the mission statement. So they want to be a pioneer and change initiator in all the segments that it operates in such as the healthcare, aviation, digital needs, venture capital, and also power among other companies. So uh, we, uh, we try to find uh, from the official website of the General Electrics, uh, we can classify into several points. The first one, uh, they have the value that innovative solution that deliver exchange energy. The second one is work with the highest integrity. The next one is compliance culture and respect for human rights, and also reducing the impact of our technology and environmental footprint. So the question is, uh, is it the General Electric is included in the UNGC? The answer is uh, obviously yes. And they also uh, directly related to several points from the SDGs or the Sustainable Coast Development, which, which is the number seven, eight, uh, nine, also 12, 13, and also 16 and 17. And if we can, uh, if we can move on for the next topic, which is the accident. Uh, actually, we found two, two incidents lately. Uh, the first one is about the incident of the China plane. I guess uh, and the the news is quite fast. It's uh, two hours ago and happening today. But I think that the incident is indirectly related to the General uh, Electric because uh, the General Electric just uh, give the machine and the machine is produced by the joint venture from the General Electric and other companies. And the second incident is about the uh, agreement. Uh, maybe I can go away. The general agreement with I can uh, share the news. Okay. So I found it here the general electric found responsible for to do power plant accident. So it's all about the general electric is grossly negligent under the contractual service agreement. So they do have to responsible for the accident and consequent losses. So I think uh, we, we think that uh, this incident is not related to the latest value about the environmental and uh, the, the, the biggest value about the environment focus or the sustainable uh, development energy. So they have to, I think they have to be responsible for this because uh, the impact is so big. I think this is the interesting one. Uh, here I can show you about the NTDC or the National Transmission and Dispatch Company and contract a major breakdown to the tripping of the good thermal power plant. So uh, the cost or the impact of this problem is quite big. This caused the tripping of high transmission nationwide and brought down the system frequency. So they have to as much well for a schedule inspection, uh, the diagnostic, the online performance monitoring and so on. So uh, it's also written uh, we in here, so uh, general actually have to compensate for losses because the authorities may legally and produce evolution option of blacklisting and so on. So I think it's uh, our findings from two twelve. I think that's enough from me and thank you. I will uh, give it back to Miss Maria. Thank you, thank you, Diko, for your uh, uh, presentation and also finding. Okay, we still have around six minutes. Maybe two more group can nominate themselves. Anyone want to raise your hand and uh, want to share your finding, please, guys? Tariska, Tariska Adelia from group one. I'm about to call girls, actually, because we have three boys already. And thank you for nominating yourself. Tariska, please, you can uh, introduce your group and then share your finding. Okay, good evening for, for all the part participation, participate. Uh, so our group will present our result and uh, our company is Amazon and there are four values. First is customer focus, second passion for invention, third operational excellence, and the last is long-term thinking. And unfortunately, uh, Amazon have, is not the participant of UNGC yet, but apparently uh, Amazon have met 
all the requirements for SDGs. And moving on, actually our team have created the presentation uh, for the for the Amazon. So we will present present it now. Uh, so for the first uh, description is about Amazon core values. There are four core values in this company. First is customer obsession rather than competitors' figures. And then secondly, passion for invention. Third, commitment to operational excellence. And the last is long-term thinking. And Amazon state that the, uh, this company strive to be Earth's most customer-centric com company, Earth's best employer, and Earth's safest place to work. Uh, and the next uh, thing that we have uh, we described is about sustainability in Amazon business target and result. First, in environment sector, in 2019, Amazon co-founded the, uh, the Climate Pledge, a commitment to achieve net zero carbon emission across our business by 2040, and to in invite others to sign on to this new level of emission in uh, 2020. Uh, Amazon has completed four things. First is launch the Climate Pledge Fund. Secondly, secure the naming rights to Climate Pledge Arena and submitted uh, registration to become the world first net zero carbon certified arena. And the third delivered more than uh, 20 million package to customer in electric delivery vehicles across North America and Europe in 2020. And four, uh, become the world leaders corporate purchasers of renewable energy and reach 65% uh, renewable energy across our business. And the second is about um, people that Amazon is committed to ensuring the people and communities that support our entire value chain are treated with fundamental dignity and respect. And we strive to ensure the product and service that the Amazon provide are produced in a way that uh, respect internationally recognized human rights. And the, uh, because the limitation of the time, you can read it by yourself. Uh, the Amazon have four, uh, have four uh, things that accomplish in this year. And the third about sustainable, maybe you can next the presentation, Tariska. Yes, you can go straight to the interesting point that you found. Okay, maybe uh, I can, uh, we can move forward to that thing. All right, the next one is about the main topics in their CSR report from, uh, from Amazon. Here are some of the key commitment, commitments uh, from Amazon that state by Amazon. The first one is Met Paris Agreement 10 years early. Second one is zero emission energy sources by 2030. And then there is a $700 million investment into uh, 100 key electric vehicles by 2024 in house development of a carbon accounting system or CAS. And then uh, there is $1 billion uh, sustainable bond for the climate and social causes. And uh, there, there are several several Amazon real action for CSR. Uh, the first one is renewable energy, and then there is shipment zero, and then electric vehicles, sustainable packaging, right now climate fund, and also climate pledge fund. Okay. We also found environmentally negative incidents. Yes, first, could you please very brief and then go to the okay. conclusion, yeah? Okay. About 15% increase in its carbon footprint, and second is thousands of unsold products are being destroyed by Amazon. And be next, uh, next is socially negative incidents. There are overworked employees and low wage for employees. Now for the contradiction, the truth is the company hasn't been able to comply even with their own employee welfare assurance. They promise a $15 per hour wage, but they only comply with 11.96 in average. And next slide, please. Next slide, please. And they can even not uh, comply with their own pets to ensure the well-being because there are so many news on their occupational safety and health 
that emerged in the news. So much so for being the eighth safest place to work. And from our findings, it is proven that their previous programs haven't met all of these sustainable values and points. Okay, thank you so much for group one. Uh, maybe one last, uh, last question because four of you uh, take turn to present, which is good. You prepare well beforehand. Can I ask one, one final comment from your group? When you search, explore the company profile, company report, and so on, do you feel that everything that's written in the report fit with the implementation in place? Maybe Clarence, you can express your opinion on this? Uh, thank you for the question, ma'am. Judging by the news and also the emerging issues related to the company, I don't think uh, what they read what they write on the report is actually what happened in the company but really? I cannot say, yeah okay but i cannot say for sure too because i haven't worked there and i haven't experienced the issues right there and there okay thank you clarence for your final uh, remark and comment so now we are already 42 past five i should uh, give the microphone back to mr yuha for comment we have four groups presenting their finding group two Group 11, group 2, group 10, group 12, and group 1. We still have plenty of uh, other companies in our hand, but guys, student, please make sure that you go through. This is very good experience for you to learn, to explore, to uh, get insight from the company. Uh, Mr. Ryuha, could you please comment on the finding presented by four groups? Yes. Okay, I understand that this was only for one lecture and and quite to be honest with you when you have to do a, such an evaluation please be very critical as i told you during the lecture don't don't believe a word that they are writing <laughs> keep that in the back of your head but uh all in all i'm very very pleased and, and happy to see such uh, active and, and participating students that is that gives me a very good feeling that you have probably learned something and and remember that <clears throat> though uh, if we take a look on the overall picture if i just may very briefly share my screen that um, our common our join table because it, it, it turned out to be pretty good if we take a look on these things this is a pretty good table to just give a glimpse and and maybe i will be later trying to uh, kind of a group these values that which companies are sharing the same values this is interesting exercise and, and there were even other companies here i'm sorry uh the the, the first page was was locked but you're able to you know provide the information and and i'll finalize and compile your findings together because this is good information in generally for a number of different companies to to get a, a, a glimpse that what is happening there um and always remember to be critical and you have to always need to remember to check the data i mean if you are just relying data on in any kinds of exercises or or analysis if you are relying only on on one source then you will be most likely missing a lot of information so always have second sources and preferably sources that don't have any invested interest for that specific company so so independent media and and things of that nature so <clears throat> that's that's the the main message for all of you on on these times we have to be source critical everything that is written is not necessarily true that's that's basically all what i okay. had in mind at this 
Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yuha. All students, uh, we already uh, listened to the finding presented by groups, but what Mr. Yuha mentioned is really very important point. Critical thinking, critical analysis need to be enhanced among students, especially when we talk about business ethics. Very easy for the big company to recruit, to hire very, very good and very famous consultant a company to write a wonderful, wonderful report, right? They can pay a lot of money. I know that practices in Indonesia, they can write a very, very convincing report. But what Mr. Yuha mentioned, please be critical. Try to find finding from many different resources, many different type of uh, uh, report. And like Toyers mentioned, visiting company, looking at from uh, listening to the people around the company is also a very important point. I know that the time is so limited for you to do the total exploration because a couple of two days ago, we shared the list of the company and so on. However, I believe today's uh, meeting is not the end of the story. We are working on the business ethic along our way. We have to be very sensitive to the uh, point principle that's shared by Mr. Yuha during the session. And now we still have a couple more minutes before end of this program for question and answer. We have already a couple questions. Guys, once again, if you want to ask questions directly, you still have time. I will give opportunity for two student Moby to raise your hand and ask questions directly. But we also have a couple questions online. I will read a couple questions that uh, can be answered directly by, by uh, Mr. Yuha. The first question is about uh, manager, staff, and all stakeholders of the company will change over time. They come and go. How to keep ethics and value of the company remain the same? Because people change time to time. How to make it consistent in terms of ethics and value? There's a question from students like that in the slideshow. Could you please answer that, Mr. Yuha? That, that was a very, very good point and very good question. And it is true, they do tend to change when top management changes. But uh, the best way of, of trying to keep the values and, and that main message the same is to have it written. Is to have it written so, and, and so boldly stated in the company's own communication, because when it's, when it's being communicated widely, openly, it is a pretty uh, big thing to start changing those values. You have to have a rather good uh, reasoning or the public relations. They have to work quite a bit to change them if they have been uh, publicly uh, uh, published and shown. So, Written documentation and written statements are always the best way of keeping uh, the, the, the things in, in the same direction. That, that I might say is, is the only one which, which could work. Okay, thank but, you. So put everything in writing and to make sure that everything transferred correctly to the next people coming and uh, mm -hmm. to the company. And we will move to the next question. Actually, I also give opportunity for students who want to directly ask questions, please raise your hand. But let me ask the second question. Second question actually asked by two different versions. The first version said, built in obsolescences ensure future revenue that could provide welfare for the company stakeholder. With this in mind, it is truly a bad thing. So maybe it is in line with another question saying that business ethics seems expensive. How the small and medium enterprises can implement business ethics while maintaining their competitiveness and profitability. What do you think, Mr. Yuha, on this question? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. and that is a difficult one. Good, good question. And if I did have uh, the, the answers for it, I wouldn't be here. I would be a millionaire. Yes. 
but the, the yes uh, the difficulty is is truly there that um when you are when when a company is trying to just survive to make a living yes it can be very tricky and very hard to make those so-called right decisions it's it's uh, as it is was as it was in the question that, that the ethics are costing they, they they can be expensive yeah but um but i know for sure that the companies that are really uh walking to talk meaning that they are uh, operating in sustainable and responsible manner they tend to be much more long living so you may have to kind of uh, change your mindset from cost to an investment so operating in a sustainable manner may be more expensive than the others but you have to consider it as an investment for the future and for the well-being of the company and uh, continuity in the company in the business because you can't forget it you, you you simply cannot sustainability is a must we cannot screw up this planet we are nearly here we're we're about to lose the whole shit i mean sorry for for my french but but the, the fact of the matter is that it's it's our life it's our planet we cannot just you know go on and, and, and screw up everything. So it will become over your life. I'm, I don't know if it, if, if it comes in my lifetime, but over your lifetime, definitely it will be mandatory thing for companies because otherwise we are, we are in so big trouble with the climate and everything. <clears throat> so prepare for the future. That's yeah. my message. <laughs> Thank you so much. Walk the talk is a very important and very strong message. Walk the talk. Whatever our position, our role in life, walk the talk. Uh, very, mm. very strong uh, advice and very strong word. And I really agree with you that without that, we cannot uh, sustain our planet. Uh, student, before I conclude the question, we still have questions in the slideshow, but I will give opportunity for you if you want to directly ask question. Sujan, do you want to ask question? Please raise your hand. Anyone want to ask direct question? Chacha, Torikul, Nisrina, Lukman, a lot of active students. Could you, uh, do you want to ask direct question? Okay, I'm giving you opportunity while asking one more question. Mr. Yuha, this is a bit sensitive, a bit sensitive, but many students asked this question in the previous meeting. Uh, soft law, you mentioned about not the hard law, but soft law. Do you think it is not easier to implement hard law to uh, control the business ethic? That's one point. And then a couple uh, years ago, before the pandemic, Indonesian government implement omnibus law because we would like to invite more investors to come and invest in Indonesia, somehow, somehow, uh, they lessen, they, they reduce the requirement in terms of, for example, environmental, environmental impact assessment, for example, no need anymore because otherwise it somehow also open a possibility for corruption, for example. So really not easy situation. Do you have any recipe to keep the balance between uh, lessen the requirement, lowering the, uh, the regulation, but still maintaining the balance. It is not easy, I believe, but maybe you have opinion on that. Student, please ask question. I will give you one opportunity after this. Please, Mr. Yuha, what do you think about these matters? If I may say that, that, that uh, loosening and getting rid of uh, requirements, especially when it comes to environment and, and, and those 
the pollution is absolutely an utterly wrong way of entertaining and, and, and luring new businesses. Um, why? Well, there are always companies who are trying to bend the rules. If there is a place where you can go away with uh, polluting and doing things in, in quite questionable manner, they will take it. The companies are greedy. Well, the company owners are greedy. They are there just to make money in quite and too many cases. Um, I understand the requirement or the need or, or wish from the government side of uh, point of view that, that by, by having a, a bit relaxed uh, regulation, it might in, uh, include and import new businesses. It is very, very tricky question. But in my mind, there's no question about it. That's that's the wrong way to do it. That's not the that's not the right way to do it. Anyways, I can't say anything. Now. I don't okay. have a solution. Yes, I understand. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing the value you have, sharing the uh, very very rich experiences and insight you have. For me, I have been working in this area. I mean, in engineering more than 25 years but your talk today is really inspiring thank you so much and all for for all students i know that maybe you you need some time to digest all the information i understand that not easy to really grab and understand all of the concept but please bring all the message with you you will be the future leader you will be the future engineers don't compromise the value that we have to bring with our role as engineers. Walk the talk. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yuha, and I invite everyone, please give a very rounded applause for Mr. Yuha. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your complete materials and looking forward, looking forward to work again with you even deeper and wider. Indonesia is open border right now. There's no need for quarantine anymore. And thanks God, the COVID-19 pandemic is somehow very, very under control. So one day, if possible, and you have a start thinking about going overseas, please put Indonesia in your destination. And we are very happy to welcome you and we can have very nice discussion because this topic really important, very important. Once again, thank you and my great appreciation for your willingness, for your time today, and really hope that what you now planted in the heart of our student will stay with them forever. Thank you. Back to you, Tias. Thank you. Pleasure was mine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Bu Maria, and also Mr. Juha Paranen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, thank you very much for the excellent lecture today. And as we have listened, we have had lecture about ethics for real. And there is one quotation from Mr. Juha that is interesting to me regarding companies' public relation. Don't believe on anything you read. He's very skeptical and analytical. Thank you very much. And yeah, I once learned that movie company also has already aware about ethics matters of company's core of business. Um, one of them entitled Dark Water, and it, it tells about DuPont Company, actually, that being sued for breaching the environment safety. Okay, so, and I would like to also thank Associate Professor Mariani Tiasari, PhD, for conducting this amazing session today. And please give applause to our speaker and moderator by using the Zoom reaction feature. Thank you. And furthermore, we would like to present a certificate awarding to our honorable speaker today. This is the certificate for Mr. Juha Pananem. Thank you very much. Oh, wow.
Thank you. Thank you so much. The certificate from our rector. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. That was nice. Once again, would like to say thank you very much to Mr. Juhab Hanin. We believe that your presentation today will be beneficial for all participants. And thank you as well, uh, Bu Maria, for moderating today's guest lecture series. And now, before we end our lecture series today, we will invite all participants, as well as the honorable speakers and moderator, to take a group photo. To all participants, we would like to invite you to open the camera. Okay, since we have many slides, I would first screenshot the first page. One, two, three. Okay, on the next slide. One, two, three. And the last slide. One, two, three. Okay, now we finish the group photo. Thank you very much. And then for, for participants, I would like to remind you again, please fill the feedback form through the link that will be given by our committee that you can also click on the Zoom chat box. And the deadline for filling the feedback form is one hour after we finish this session. And we would like to remind you again, the participants who will get the stamp are those who come on time join this event until the end and also fill the feedback form. And for the next week, we still have a very interesting topic for next week. We will conduct two interesting topics in two days. Okay, and it will represent the SDG 7 and 15 on Tuesday. And we will have SDG 6 and 14 on Wednesday. Okay, and finally, we have reached the end of today's guest lecture series. Thank you very much. And don't forget to follow our social media on Instagram at ITS International Office and also Facebook ITS International Office to keep update of our recent program. And good evening and keep safe and healthy. GLS on SDGs will be back next week. See you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much all. Uh, Yuha, thank you so much. Hope to see you again. Punani, thank you. Kimo, thank you. Thank you so much. All students, take care, okay? See you next thank week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. And allow me to end the session in three, two, one. Bye.